Hey folks, it is the Nutty Knife Guy. And today I bring you something that I've had my eye on along for a long time and never pulled the trigger on because it's a little pricey for me and I'm not a fan of out the front knives. But while searching for other knives, on the internet, I found this on Smoky Mountain Knife Works for a decent price. I would call this mid-range when it comes to OTFs. This is the Bocker Plus Kalishnikov Automat out the front knife in D2 steel. Uh, it is made for them by ViperTech. And from what I've seen about Viper Tech, it is either hated or loved. There doesn't seem to be any in between. Uh, some people would call this a budget blade. I like I said, I would call this mid range. This was $120. All right. So I'm thinking 50 and below is what I consider a budget blade. What you consider a budget blade might be different, but. Um, with all the reservations I have about uh, out the front knives, and I will explain them in a moment, uh, I gotta say I like this knife. It is in my carry rotation and it's probably gonna be there for a while. Now, I wanted another out the front in my Microtech. I've got an El Cheapo Special Forces brand uh, out the front that I found at a flea market somewhere. I think I paid like $30 for it. And it's actually okay for what it is. Uh, but it's heavy, it's clunky, and it's out the front, so it's in my collection, and I take it out and play with it every once in a while. But when I saw this one, I said this might address a lot of my problems without the fronts, because the biggest problem without the front is that there are never any guard, and they're usually slim and have pretty slippery handles. Uh, now, I understand, they, they want to keep them... Uh, slim and light so you can carry them and whatnot but with no guard and a slick slim grip that you can't really get a grip on uh, and a really sharp blade yikes and then you're bleeding and your knife's got your own covered with your own blood and it's on the ground and it's not very useful to you when it's covered with your own blood on the ground and your hands are continuing to leak uh, so just from a safety and utility basis, I was never crazy about out the fronts. This one, on the other hand, is rather beefy in the grip. And I usually don't like finger guards on any knives. I don't like being told how, I, you know, how I'm supposed to hold the knife. This, on the other hand, kind of solves the problem of no guard. These are relatively deep. And this one actually has what can be considered, at the end of this, a bit of a guard. Uh, this does not slip in my hand. All right. Uh, so, no, I did not stab myself. Uh, uh, so, on that, I like it. Now, it's got some texturing on it. I am probably going to get some talon grips to make that even more of a texture. Uh, for, but not so much for well, not so much for the texture. Another thing I have with uh, a problem I have with out the fronts is that they're usually aluminum in their construction, and uh, sometimes in Ohio it gets really, really cold, sub-zero cold, and aluminum takes that cold, and it gets cold enough that you don't want to handle it without gloves. Uh, and I consider that a deficit. Talon grips would solve, well, it wouldn't solve the problem, but would mitigate that problem to a certain degree. So, talon grips are probably in this thing's future. Uh, but, uh, having said that, it feels fantastic. It's got a nice snappy action. It handles well, and it seems pretty much balanced. And uh, it's got jimping back here, and most of the time, uh, when they put jimping back here, I think it's cosmetic. But not only does this give you some place to really cap your grip if you're going reverse grip, get that thumb up there on the, on top so it doesn't 
uh, slip out of your hand, but also, at least in my hand, when I get it in a uh, saber grip or uh, a handshake grip, these serrations actually do uh, force some traction in the palm to keep the knife from slipping backward. Uh, so this is a nicely thought out design. Uh, D2 steel is good steel. It's got a nice stone wash finish. So, uh, despite some rever some people's reservations about Viper Tech and the fact that this is Bakker Plus, which is their kind of bargain line, it's not as bargain as the Bakker Magnum line. I have a Bakker Magnum knife that I am going to review because it's actually not too bad. But uh, so far, this has done well. I've had it for about two weeks now. Been carrying it pretty regularly. Um, the pocket clip is really stiff and I may bend that so it's not quite so stiff because sometimes it's snagging when I come out of my pocket. I don't carry this as a, uh, a personal protection knife like all, you know, like most of my folders. I carry this for my day-to-day -day utility, you know, knife stuff that normal people do with knives. So speed of access is not, uh... A huge deal, but I really don't like having to fumble with it, getting it out of my pocket. And like anything else you carry, you never know when you're going to need it, or for what you're going to need it, for, or what you're going to need it for. So that is the Bakker Plus. My uh, Kalishnikov Automat. I'm going to say it with a stupid accent that I know is wrong, because I have so much fun saying it like that. Kalishnikov Automat. Uh, so we're going to go out and we're going to post this. Now, uh, I don't know if a lot of my testing is going to be, my normal testing would be fair to this thing. Uh, it's definitely not a bushcraft knife. You probably have to feather stick it and I'm going to try that more to test edge and retention than anything else. Um, what I may do, and I'm not really going to make this decision until I can get out in the garage. What I may do to test the locking mechanisms here is to, if I can find my rubber mallet. That's the where going to the detention uh, is going to be the test. So I'm going to put this on my high tech uh, testing stool apparatus, uh, otherwise known as the broken chair that I jab knives at, knives into, and. Uh, Give it a couple of decent wax with the with the rubber mallet. If I can find the rubber mallet, that's a big if. Uh, rather than trying to do this with it, because even with gloves on, I'm a little leery in my aforementioned design about this. I'm a little leery of doing that since I injured myself with the loose on. I'm a little knife shy about uh, about cutting myself, uh, and also. Even though this uh, has been carried and used to open quite a few things, this had the best factory edge of any knife I've ever owned coming out of the box. Uh, so, like 150 knives now, I still say this is the best factory edge. And I'm going to see, I haven't really tested it since I've been using it, but it hasn't seemed to dull. Let's see if I can get this on camera here. Okay, you know, went through here and I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> I just wanted to cut that little tab off there. So, uh, and this is like I said, after carrying it around for a long time uh, and using it to open a couple of boxes and things. So, I'm hoping this edge holds up. D2, D2 it should, but by far, I would say, the best factory edge on any knife I've ever owned. Um, so, with all my reservations about uh, out the front knives, I I really like this one. Uh, another one thing I don't like about out front knives is that they can't help. It's just the way they have to be, so they can uh, they ha they have to be made so they can be out the front. As I don't like this uh, uh, blade being offset offset from the center of the handle, that bugs me. So, but. Let's go out to the post, and we will see. Okay, folks. 
couldn't find the rubber mallet quickly, so we'll have to do without that particular test. We will start with the Donny B all day drop test, but being out the front, and since the blade is offset, this might not be very straight to be in. Anyway, but we'll do it for tradition's sake, if nothing else. Actually, that was a nice straight throw. I mean, nice straight drop. And look at that. One more time. Still pretty straight. That was because it hit the uh, not, uh, uh, part of the stool that went flat. Let's see if I can get it in the center this time. There, that was almost where I hit it before. So, actually, balanced fairly well. Let me go over here and see if I can find a glove for the stabbing test. There we go. Okay. Now, this might slip just because of the glove, but I am a little bit more afraid than I once was about cutting myself after the Luzon mishap. <sighs> okay, I'm throwing it in there pretty good, and the lock is holding. This is an out to front, so I'm going to see if I can get something to pound it with. Yeah. And we'll just use the spine of the hogue here. Oh, I, I, interview, I reviewed this last week, but I just beat on that thing on a piece of aluminum, and it's still good. Okay, now, see if I can show you how far in that tip is. at least a half an inch and I actually it took a little English to get that out of there and while I get up here where you can see and I broke it <laughs> well that's very unfortunate and I'm going to uh, Dismiss the rest of the test and see if I can get the tip out of this stool. Got to say, uh, I don't think that was excessive. I will probably re-grind it to make it useful again. But uh, I guess that's why you watch this type of thing. Uh, I mean... Uh, a lot of people will say that that was an unfair test, I suppose, but if you ever actually use your knives, it really was, you know that it really wasn't unfair. Uh, and we're going to go downstairs to see what we can do. Well, folks, there it is. Now, there are going to be people that say that this was an unfair test. And I'm going to try to get a warranty a, uh, honored by Bacher. But uh, I doubt they'll, they'll probably say that what I did was abusive. But the thing of it is, far less expensive knives that are supposed to be inferior have done just fine with that test. That stool I use is not a very hard wood. 
Uh, and that tip just just snapped. Now I'm going to re if I don't if they don't author, uh, honor the warranty. I'm going to uh, reprofile this to make it pointy again because it's not affecting the function of the knife. But like I said, I've been wondering about this for a while. It took me a long time to convince myself to do it. And look what I got. Uh, I've done that test with a lot of knives. I've broken two. I've broken two of them now that way. One was a Schrade and now this one. Uh, the Schrade was way less expensive than this. So. I don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, I am very sad. I really like this thing. I will continue to like this thing even if I have to reprofile it. Uh, or if I get another one. But um, this, I'm sorry, I know a lot of people say, well, yeah, you don't stab it in the wood and twist it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you do. If you carry a knife and you use knives, you do things like that. And also, this is designed, this is really marketed as a tactical knife, a personal protection knife. And this would snap in bone. Stab a lizard man, zombie ninja, or any other critter with bones in it and you do a thrust you hit a bone it's going to have some tor side to side torque and this would have snapped that simple uh, crying shame really but there it is uh, so I leave you with my usual admonishment on my admonishment to draw your knives only in just purpose, to see them only with honor, and to remember that without life, uh, excuse me, without knives, life would be dull and pointless. Please like, share, and subscribe if you ever mind to. Help me feed the almighty YouTube algorithm. All hail the algorithm. And with that, I bid you goodbye.